Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, I gotta ask, um, do you guys ever get sick of me, like, saying the same intro in every video? Meh, I enjoy it. This story takes us to the mystical, exotic land of Missouri. Go ahead, pinch yourself, it's real. But hey, whew, wipe your brow, right, with relief, because we're not staying there. We're going from there to this island, where the awesome name of Devil's Island, oh, yeah. and we're gonna meet a family called the Wallers. And they had built up some walls. Those walls would be broken down, though, in like a kind of, you know, here's Johnny kind of way. So let's give it a go. Cape Girardeau is the place. <laughs> Whoa. It's a city in Missouri hosting about 40,000 fine folk. That's it. That's all I got. All right, fine. It's in southeast Missouri, just across the Mississippi from Illinois, and by all accounts is a bustling and booming little city that well, ain't so little anymore. It's a college town, home of Southeast Missouri State. And that brings with it mostly benefits. Food, history, culture is thriving, lots of outdoor activities, but also a higher crime rate than you might enjoy. But I'm not doing a tourism advert for Cape Girardeau. They seem to be doing a good enough job of that themselves. I'm here to tell you a story, a scale. August Kade and scale? Well, that begins in June 2011. Jackie, Sue, Ross, and Waller had been married to a man named Clay Waller for about a decade and a half in 2011. But that's as long as they would make it. After a marriage and three children, triplets uh, actually, Avery, Maddox, and Addison, they were calling it a day. Dunzo! Boop! Stick a fork in it. It was the 1st of June 2011 that Clay and Jackie, they were actually about to sort of kind of start finalizing. The, they were meeting with an attorney together to get all the papers done and dusted. And they hung out for a little bit, had lunch, split, and were gonna meet at 3 p.m. outside the Cape Girardeau County Attorney's Office. Jackie was 39 years old, and they had been separated. It had been going slowly and steadily, Jackie cut into treads, until now it was time to get it over and done with. At the time, Jackie and the kids were staying with Jackie's sister, Cheryl, in St. Genevieve, about an hour up the road. Growing up, Jackie and Cheryl, they weren't too close, but now they were, they were best buds. It seems the, you know, turbulent marriage to Clay, it had built up a wall between Jackie and Clay, but it had torn down the wall between Cheryl and Jackie. Wall -er. Clay was living in a house in Jackson just outside the Cape. The marriage between uh, Jackie and Clay was never, like never, uh, viewed fondly though by the Rawson family. They were not too keen, uh, they thought he was a douchebag, uh, to be honest. Just didn't like each other, they had nothing in common, they started off on the wrong foot and they never got on the right one. They had a lot of reasons for disliking Clay, you'll see a few. He was always viewed as just a weird guy, unlikable, awkward, and he had a speech impediment. So to Jackie's family, they thought she, you know, she, Jackie, felt sorry for him. That's why they were together. She wanted to look after him. Ah, the old mommy girlfriend. That won't get toxic at all. Clay had moved about from Jubbo to Jubbo, even being a county deputy for a while, but more or less he was a constant deadbeat. Jackie, though, she had a good job and was making money at an insurance company. Clay, he wouldn't work on batteries, and was allergic to being useful in any way, either helping pay the bills, or being a loving and supporting parent and husband. Jackie knew divorce was on its way, as did Cheryl, her sister, who she told all this to. Clay, he had gone from, you know, distant and just not there, to up close and personal to Jackie, in kind of a kapow kind of way. Besides the fact as well that he did sweet fuck all, time to cut the dead weight loose. A blessing was a few months before, after Clay lost yet another job, they lost the house. So it gave Jackie an excuse to separate from Clay. Paper swiftly followed. So that day, that day is June 1. 
They met up outside, and about an hour later, Jackie called her sister, Cheryl, to let her know the meeting with Clay and the attorney it went smoothly, and she was going to his house to pick up their son, who, who had been staying there, and then she'd be straight back to St. Genevieve. But of course, Jackie never arrived back to St. Genevieve that night. She never responded to text messages. She never responded to calls. Neither did Clay. That was until Cheryl, who was worried out of her wits end, waiting for her sister to come home, basically texted, texted, give, gave him the old text and said, Hey, listen, if you, if I don't hear from Jackie in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to call the police, Clay, and I'm going to tell them you did something to my sister. At which point, Clay immediately rang. What? She never came home and you haven't heard from her or seen her since? That's big weird. I'm sure she's fine though. She's fine her. She was at least alive when I last seen her when she left me house, so I'm sure she'll turn up at some stage. Alright, thanks for calling. Don't call the police. So, okay, bye, 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 bye. Jackie was reported missing that night at about 11.45 p.m. Immediately, Cheryl said Clay had done something. The very next day, Clay was served with a search warrant for his home and his vehicle. He said they were at his place and they were to make love one last time while they had the house to themselves. Their son Maddox was with Clay's new girlfriend in Illinois. However, they got into an argument and she took off walking and that was the last time he saw of her. He had popped out at one stage to have a goo and when he returned, her car was gone. Now, funnily enough, her car had already been found. It had been found that morning, June the 2nd, abandoned off the interstate. The tires had been slashed, and not just like a puncture, as in the tire had been stabbed while the car was stationary. It was staged. Dozens of officers are now working this case. The Cape Girardeau Bollinger County Major Case Squad is investigating several leads. No one believes that this mother of three would just walk away from her children. Very uncharacteristic for her. Again, she had three children. Uh, we have no reason to believe she would have any reason to walk away from them. Uh, so we definitely want to find out uh, where she is or what's happened to her. 39-year-old Jackie Waller, formerly of Cape Girardeau, was last seen here on Woodland Drive in North Neal in Jackson. Her car, found abandoned here on I-55 northbound near the Fruitland exit on Wednesday afternoon. Police hope you'll take a good look at her vehicle, this blue Honda Pilot, and let officers know if you saw it recently. Authorities on Friday searched this property here off Woodland Drive. Dive teams with the Missouri Highway Patrol searched two ponds. According to police, Jackie Waller's estranged husband lived somewhere on this property. So after that car, as I said, it was shortly after that, they got a search warrant for Clay's home. And they found blood in Clay's car. And like, not a negligible amount. But it was fish blood. It, it turned out, if you can believe that. Yeah, just your like regular fish, you fucking butcher like a serial killer. But they did also find some blood, some specks of blood, in his hallway. And there was something fishy about that, even if there wasn't anything fishy about that at all. I kind of hate that I just said that. The carpet had also been cut up, and when the police looked in the basement, they could tell the dirt around the crawl space had been disturbed. So they went in after, and what they found was, well, the carpet. And more blood was on the carpet. But they didn't have a body, and they had no idea where Jackie Waller had actually, at this point, been taken. And Clay, when he was asked about, hey, there's like a shit of blood, and your soon-to-be ex-wife is missing, any idea about this at all? I rack your brains, you know, give it a good old thing. And he said, yeah, I know exactly what happened. She had a nosebleed. She fucking bled all over my carpet. I had to, I couldn't leave it there. You know, I couldn't clean the carpet. I'd cut it up, you know, and then what am I going to do? Throw it in the trash? No, 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 no. I'm going to hide it. Obviously, what else would you do with the carpet that had stains on it? You'd hide it. This once again will demonstrate that Clay Waller just thought he was smarter than everyone else, including you and everyone you know, while also simultaneously proving that Clay Waller was an absolute dumb shit. New clues in the disappearance of a mother of triplets in Missouri. Investigators said Wednesday that Jackie Waller's personal business cards were found on a stretch of road just 10 miles from where her car was recovered 43 days ago. Her husband has been named a person of interest in her disappearance. Police do suspect foul play, but at this point they tell us they do not have enough evidence to establish that a crime was committed. The day Jackie had gone missing, she had met Clay at a drugstore. 
She went to an ATM and then to the divorce attorney and to Clay's. And then she disappeared. But Clay was seen again that day. Later on, he was seen cleaning his small boat. Pretty thoroughly. And he could have gone anywhere up or down the Mississippi. The search for Jackie became big news. But it was going nowhere fast. Searches across the county and beyond, they didn't find anything. Searches where Clay would drive by, flipping the bird. Way to keep your head down, idiot. Yeah, he would often beep the horn as he drove past search parties looking for Jackie. F and this and F and that. Might be willing to, to say a few words today? Well, I'll say it after the thing. Okay. I'll say, it, I'll say it after the thing. Is there anything you'd like to say beforehand? Anything to the community or? I just, I just miss my wife and my kids and we're just, we're just, we're just we're trying to fight to see him. Do you think he'll get that? Um, well, I hope so. I mean, it's, it's been a hard time for us all. So, I'm just gonna, just, just, uh, uh, keep hoping for the best, the best. Well, I just can't, I can't change how people feel. Um, I mean, it, there's a lot of emotions that are, are running high right now. Um, we just, I just don't know what to say yet. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I'm just, we're all just sad. It's just sad on, on both sides of the um, fence here. I still want to let people know that you didn't have anything to do with what's going on here and you want what everyone else wants. You want to find your wife? For sure, yeah. That's, we want her to come home alive. During the investigation, the police seized Jackie's work, uh, her work computer, and on it, they found a diary. She'd been recording the threats of violence Clay had been issuing towards her. Six months earlier, she had written, I told him I was going to file for divorce. He said he had a feeling that one of us would not be around to watch our kids grow up. Clay told me I did not deserve to live. He told me that a divorce would be my death sentence. Clay told me that if he couldn't get me, he would kill our kids. He would take them for a weekend fishing trip, and then he would personally tell me they drowned so he could see my face. The police had even placed a tracker on Clay's car in hopes that he might, you know, maybe try and return to the scene, maybe move the body, you know, hopefully they could find out where she had been dumped. It was soon determined that Clay knew a tracker had been placed. Or at least he knew he was being followed because he wouldn't go anywhere of note. In fact, he would drive to vacant areas and just sit there for some time. The police would follow and begin a search of that area. And Clay would be laughing his hole off. He was just, he was just winding them up. But shit hit the van in September 2011 when Clay was charged with making online threats against Cheryl. Uh, Jackie's sister. Cheryl was desperate to find her sister, but in the meantime, she had been given custody uh, of the triplets. And it seems Clay... Clay was not too fond of that, even though he had threatened to murder his own kids just to see the expression on their mother's face. Dad of the year over here! You are dead. I promise if those kids get hurt, I will get you. Five, ten, twenty-five years from now, you'll have it coming. No one hurts those kids but me! He pled guilty and got five years for that one. But the entire time he said he didn't know anything. He pleaded not guilty, he said he didn't kill Jackie, but he would happily point the finger at whomever entered his little brain that day. And Jack around, and if, 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 if you guys know so much, figure it out. I don't know what to tell you. I had nothing to do with nothing. Clay was the architect of his own downfall in the end, you'll be happy to hear. Him winding up the police and winding up the general public because he was hated. He would claim there was a witch hunt going on. The guy who was uh, flipping the bird at people trying to find his missing wife. Yeah, real witch hunt. I don't know how he thought it would end, uh, but I think he was so arrogant he didn't think it would end at all. Heartland News at 5 on KFBS 12.
Good afternoon, everyone. Kathy is on assignment. We are following a lot of stories at five, including the latest on Clay Waller and the search for Jackie Waller's body. Waller now charged with first degree murder in connection with the disappearance of his estranged wife, Jackie. Two years after Jackie's disappearance, Clay was charged with first degree murder. Now, they had no body. In fact, they didn't really have much more evidence than they did two years before. They had the carpet, the blood, the threats, him cleaning his boat. It was all circumstantial, but hey, circumstantial enough to get a conviction? Well, Clay thought so. He thought so much, in fact, that when uh, Clay Waller was offered a deal, the deal being Clay, you know, tell the police, tell the authorities where you buried Jackie Waller. They'll reduce your sentence to second degree murder and they promise, you know, you'll get no more than 20 years. Clay said, I will, yeah. About five miles upstream of Cape Girardeau lies Devil's Island, where he had taken Jackie's body after her death. See, Clay said Jackie had come over to have a little sex one last time and they ended up getting into a fight, and he lost it. He lost control, and well, he killed her. She goaded him into killing him. It was her fault, really. That's his words. But Jackie had told her sister she was going to Clay's house to collect her son. Her son wasn't at the house, but Jackie didn't know that. Clay had lied to Jackie. Well, their son was actually in Illinois. Clay just wanted to get Jackie alone and he needed an excuse to get her. When Clay and the police arrived on Devil's Island, it took them five days to find Jackie. Clay claimed to have forgotten where he had buried her, but there was one single tree on the island that was dead. And Clay said he had covered Jackie's body with fertilizer, a fertilizer which would have killed the roots of this tree. Jackie had multiple fractures to her skull. She had been beaten with a blunt force object, no doubt. Another crack in Clay's story of just losing it. For the record, the court calls the case of State of Missouri versus James Clay Waller II. Case number 12CGCR006861. Do you understand what you're charged with? Do you intend to plead guilty to this amended charge? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you don't have to plead guilty? You have a right to a trial if you want one. Right. Has anybody promised you anything other than a guilty plea to get you to than the plea agreement to get you to plead guilty? No. Has anybody threatened you or threatened anyone you care about to get you to plead guilty? Uh -huh. Has anybody told you that anything to do with this case is a secret and you're not supposed to talk to me? No. What is the plea agreement in this case, Ms. Woodruff? Judge, there is an agreement in this case. The state agreed to amend this charge to murder in the second degree and recommend a sentence of 20 years to serve and dismiss counts two and three. And in return, Mr. Waller had to provide the location of Jackie Waller's body. <laughs> Law enforcement had to be capable of recovering her body, and then Mr. Waller had to sit down and give an accounting of how he killed Jackie Waller. Mr. Waller has satisfied all three of those conditions. Mr. Waller, the state has alleged that on or about June 1st of 2011 in Cape Girardeau County, Missouri, you committed the Class A felony of murder in the second degree, and that you knowingly caused the death of Jackie Sue Waller by repeatedly striking her about the head and face and by pressing your forearm against her neck with all the weight of your body, thereby suffocating her, <coughs> resulting in her death. What did you do that makes you guilty of that offense? I did that.
Now Clay is obviously being an arrogant bastard this entire time. He's a real piece of work. If by work you mean shit, and I do. That spring in 2013, Clay was thinking to himself, holy moly, I got it made, I'm home free. If you need to be apologetic and remorseful, I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up in court tomorrow and tell everybody fucking stuff. Why should I care what they're going through if they don't care what I'm going through? You understand? I'm, no, I don't. You're not the victim of what? It happened two years ago. I just want to move on. I'm sorry, I'm going to jail. That's it. When I walk out them doors, they can't do that more to me. I mean, I don't think they can, can they? 20 years! What a dealio! Be a fool not to take that for murdering my wife. And it drew outrage too, like people were fuming that that's all he got for what he did. But arrogance knows no bounds, because while awaiting sentencing, he thought he would like to tell his side of the story. In jail, Clay made friends with another inmate in his cell block, a guy named Cedric Dean. Cedric was a career criminal, but he loved writing. And so Clay approached Cedric and he said to him, listen, I've got a book deal coming on, uh, coming my way from a New York City publishing house. That book deal, that book deal will be worth $400,000, right? And I'll give you $10,000 if you ghost write it for me. So you do all the work, write the whole thing, and I'll give you 400000 versus 10000 you know, if you're great, I'll give you a whole 2.5% of the profits. whoop de doo The book? Clay had even thought of a name. The title? If you take my kids, I'll kill you. The confession of Missouri's most notorious wife killer. Uh, well, it's to the point. No mucking about, I'll give it that. It'll fly off the shelves. Clay said it would be a tell-all book, and it would help set up a trust fund for his kids. Now... Cedric quickly figured out that that was not going to be not going to be the case at all. This would not be a tell-all book, uh, you know, no holds barred, pure honesty that Clay made it sound like. No, um, as he was writing the book, and you know, Clay was more or less dictating it to him. Pretty much every chapter in the book ended with. Like Alan Partridge, you know? Needless to say, I had the last laugh. It is a book that's full of joy, but it's chiefly joy at other people's misfortune. Mm. They all ended like pretty much like that year. Clay Waller is a winner. He told the story like he was taunting Jackie's family. Like he enjoyed the murder and was being exploitative with the details of it. After six weeks, the book was written. 300 pages, and Clay smuggled the manuscript out. Clay also uh, stiffed Cedric out of the 10,000 books he had promised him for writing it. Clay told the prison guards Cedric was trying to extort him, and so Cedric was put into solidarity. In the meantime, prosecutors were already looking to charge Clay with more than the second degree murder charge, and after interviewing inmates, doing more interviews with Clay, and they learned of the book. The police spoke to Cedric and again found out more details that Clay had kept hidden that only the killer would know. Would know cl clues like how he had dug the hole for Jackie Waller's body the day before, how he had been sleeping the night before in Illinois. He crossed interstate lines, which basically, that makes it a lot more serious when you cross state lines. And speaking with Cedric, uh, Cedric told the police, you know, after spending so much time with him on this book, he felt 100% sure that Clay would, in fact, kill again. Clay Waller got an additional charge, interstate domestic violence. That would give him another 35 years, which he would only be able to serve after he did the 20 for murder. So that is 55 years altogether. See you later, Slick. And so ends this story, a story of just supreme arrogance leading to one murder and the downfall of the murderer. Well deserved. Clay truly was asking for it in every possible way. He thought he was hot shit when he was just shit. And he thought he'd be a celebrity book writer, out after 20, telling his no-holds-barred story, when in fact he just wanted to laugh at the family whose lives he had just ruined. And he was too lazy to even write the friggin' thing. 
Cedric was later rewarded for telling the police everything, and he was let out. And Clay will be behind bars for the next 50 odd years, and more than likely, forever after. Like his ghost, I mean. Though instead of doing the haunting, I hope he is haunted. For eternity. Thank you for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time to do so, being here with me, watching a story of Clay Waller, who's the biggest friggin' asshole I've covered in a while. Um, to end, please subscribe if you would like to, to see a new True Crime video every Tuesday and Friday. I've been doing this for a few years, you'd think I'd know by now, but that's what I get for, hey, ad-libbing. Um, also, please check out some merch down below in the description for some mugs and t-shirts and hoodies, or you can check out the That Chapter Patreon where there's some nice little bonuses. But until the next little video, which will be in like a couple of days, uh, take care of yourselves. Cause I love ya. Mike out.